Leo Frank Case Timeline 1905 July The Niagara Movement is founded by 29 black men to set up an organization that has as one of its goals the independent economic development of black people. Lynchings, 62. Executions, 156. 1906. September. A deadly race riot occurs in Atlanta when whites massacre as many as 50 innocent blacks and probably many more. Leo M. Frank graduates from Cornell University with a degree in mechanical engineering. Lynchings, 65. Executions, 128. 1908. August 14th and 15th. Springfield, Illinois, race riot by white unionists targeting black workers. August. Leo M. Frank moves to Atlanta to supervise factory operations at the National Pencil Company, becoming its superintendent. Lynchings, 97. Executions, 115. 1909. February. The NAACP, the direct descendant of the Niagara Movement, is formed. Lynchings, 82. Executions, 139. 1911. October. The National Urban League is organized to help blacks secure equal employment. Lynchings, 60. Executions, 106. 1912. April 14th through the 15th. The Titanic sinks. About 1,500 of 2,200 passengers and crew members drown. Mary Fagan is hired at the National Pencil Company. Lynchings, 61. Executions, 161. 1913. February 4th. Rosa Parks, the mother of the civil rights movement, is born in Tuskegee, Alabama. March 10th. Harriet Tubman, former slave, abolitionist, and freedom fighter, dies. April 11th. The Wilson administration, 1913 through 1921, begins government-wide racial segregation of federal workplaces. April 26th. 13-year-old Mary Fagan is murdered at the National Pencil Company, NPC, where she has worked full-time for over a year. April 27th. Mary Fagan's body is discovered by Newt Lee, night watchman of the NPC. Atlanta police arrest Lee. Attorney Luther Z. Rosser is hired by NPC. April 27th. Arthur Mullinax, former streetcar conductor and acquaintance of Mary Fagan's, is arrested on suspicion in the murder of Mary Fagan. April 28th. Pinkerton Detective Agency is hired by Leo M. Frank. April 28th. James Gant, a former shipping clerk at the National Pencil Factory, and Gordon Bailey, a laborer employed at the National Pencil Company, are arrested on suspicion in the murder of Mary Fagan. The Atlanta Constitution offers a reward of $1,000. Police disperse a white mob threatening to lynch Newt Lee. April 29th. Leo M. Frank, superintendent of the National Pencil Company, is taken into police custody and identified as a suspect in Mary Fagan's murder. April 29th. Mary Fagan is buried. Frank is asked by police and his own detective to privately interrogate Newt Lee. A bloody shirt had been found in Lee's home. April 30th. Coroner's inquest begins. May 1st. Arthur Mullinax and James Gant are released. Newt Lee and Leo Frank are still being held. James, Jim, Conley, a sweeper at the factory, is arrested. May 5th. Paul Bowen is arrested in Houston, Texas, on suspicion of Mary Fagan's murder. May 6th. A grand jury is formed to review evidence in the case. May 7th. Police report that someone is planting false evidence and trying to block their investigation. May 8th. The investigation by the coroner is completed and Newt Lee and Leo Frank are ordered held on the charge of murder of Mary Fagan. May 9th. 14-year-old NPC employee Montine Stover comes forward with information that undermines Frank's alibi. May 16th. Attorney Thomas Felder enters the case, operating covertly on Frank's behalf to bring in the Burns Agency detectives. May 18th. 
James Conley, a sweeper at the NPC factory, who had been arrested on May 1st, begins to reveal his role helping his boss, Leo Frank, move and conceal the body of Mary Fagan. May 19th. C.W. Toby, an investigator from the William J. Burns Detective Agency, arrives in Atlanta to assist in the investigation of Mary Fagan's murder. May 22nd. Attorney Thomas Felder was caught in secret recordings offering a $1,000 bribe to police officials to obtain documents needed by the Leo Frank defense team. May 23rd. The Fagan Grand Jury Convenes. May 24th. The Fulton County Grand Jury indicts Leo M. Frank for the murder of Mary Fagan and holds Newt Lee as a material witness. May 27th. A detective from the Burns Agency withdraws from the case and publicly states his finding that Leo Frank was the murderer of Mary Fagan. May 30th. James Conley reenacts his role at the factory on the day of the murder for police and reporters, who are impressed that he is telling the truth. June 3rd. Manola McKnight, the black cook for Leo Frank's family, signs an affidavit saying that she had overheard Frank's wife and her mother discussing Frank's confession to the murder of Mary Fagan. June 21st. Prominent Atlanta attorney Reuben Arnold announces that he has joined Leo Frank's defense team, declaring, quote, I do not believe that any white man committed this crime, end quote. June 28th. John M. Slayton is inaugurated as governor of Georgia. Summer of 1913. Henry Ford introduces the assembly line, producing a thousand Model Ts daily. Ford also establishes a, then unprecedented wage of, $5 a day workday. July 21st. The grand jury of Fulton County decides not to bring an indictment against James Conley. July 28th. Trial of Leo Frank begins. August 4th. James Conley begins to testify over three days, for about 16 hours. August 7th. C.B. Dalton, a railroad carpenter, verifies Conley's story that Dalton and Frank had engaged in immoral sexual behavior with women at the National Pencil Factory while Conley watched out on their behalf. August 12th. 13-year-old office boy Alonzo Mann testifies under oath that he was at the factory and knows nothing of the murder. August 13th. Mrs. Ray Frank, Leo Frank's mother, leapt to her feet and shouted an anti-Christian epithet at the prosecutor and was removed from the courtroom. Her outburst enters religion into the trial for the first time. August 18th. Leo Frank takes the witness stand and gives an unsworn statement for four hours, but will not allow himself to be cross-examined. August 25th. Leo Frank is found guilty of the murder of Mary Fagan. August 26th. Judge Leonard S. Roan sentenced Leo Frank to hang for the murder of Mary Fagan. The execution date is set for October 10th. October 1st. Leo Frank's lawyers file an amended motion for a new trial. October 22nd. The hearing on the motion for a new trial convenes. Leo Frank's lawyers attempt to get him a new trial. October 31st. Judge L.S. Roan denies Leo Frank's motion for a new trial. Frank's lawyers subsequently appeal and file a bill of exceptions that carries the case to the Supreme Court of Georgia. November 8th. The American Jewish Committee's Executive Committee, including scholar Cyrus Adler, attorney Louis Marshall, businessman Cyrus Soltzberger, Judge Julian Mack, and banker Jacob Schiff, meets to discuss the case of Leo M. Frank. December 23rd. The Federal Reserve System of Private Banks is established, providing central private control over the nation's currency and credit. The 50th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation is celebrated throughout the year. Lynchings, 51. Executions, 133. 1914. January 7th. Frank's lawyers submit a legal filing rebutting the state's case against their client, and the Georgia Supreme Court postpones any ruling for a month. February 17th. The Georgia Supreme Court denies Leo Frank's motion for a new trial by a 4-2 to two vote. The guilty verdict in the trial of Leo Frank is affirmed by the Georgia Supreme Court, 
and the case is returned to the jurisdiction of the state's lower court, the Fulton County Superior Court, to set a new execution date. February 18th. Adolf Ox, Jewish owner of the New York Times, begins his campaign to exonerate Leo Frank. February 24th. James Conley is found guilty of being an accessory after the fact of the murder of Mary Fagan. He is sentenced by Judge Benjamin H. Hill of the Fulton County Superior Court to a year on a chain gang for being an accessory after the fact in Mary Fagan's murder. Leo Frank's defense attorneys file a motion for a rehearing of his case before the Supreme Court of Georgia. February 25th. The Supreme Court of Georgia unanimously refuses the motion for a rehearing of the appeal of Leo M. Frank for a new trial. March 7th. Judge Benjamin H. Hill of the Fulton County Superior Court resentences Leo M. Frank to death by hanging, with the execution date set for Friday, April 17, 1914, Leo M. Frank's 30th birthday. March 19th. Attorney Thomas E. Watson publishes his first commentary on the case seven months after the conviction of Leo Frank. April 12th. A reward of $1,000 is offered by Detective William J. Burns, quote, for satisfactory information in connection with reports that Leo Frank is a pervert or is immoral, end quote. April 16th. Leo Frank's attorneys again move for a new trial. The execution, set for the next day, is postponed. The formal filing of the extraordinary motion for a new trial led to the setting of an April 23rd court date, which automatically triggered a stay of execution. Fulton Bag and Cotton Mill, Atlanta's largest employer, engages in worker exploitation as a matter of policy, provoking a bitter strike that exposed the rapacious underbelly of post-Civil War industrialization. May 6th, Judge Benjamin Hill of the Fulton County Superior Court overrules and denies the extraordinary motion for a new trial. June 6th, the Fulton County Superior Court denies the motion to set aside the verdict. Leo Frank's attorneys immediately appeal to the Georgia Supreme Court. October 14th, the Georgia Supreme Court unanimously upholds Judge Benjamin Hill's denial of Leo Frank's extraordinary motion request for a new trial. November 14th, the Georgia Supreme Court affirms the trial and judgment in the Leo Frank case. November 18th, the request by Frank's attorneys for a review of the case is rejected by the Georgia Supreme Court. December 7th, the U.S. Supreme Court refuses to review the Leo Frank case. Mid-December, Judge Benjamin Hill denies Leo Frank's application for a writ of error and sets a new execution date of January 22, 1915. December 17, Leo Frank's Atlanta counsel, acting at the behest of Louis Marshall, file a petition for a writ of habeas corpus before Judge William T. Newman of the U.S. District Court of the Northern District of Georgia. Judge Newman subsequently denies the petition for a writ of habeas corpus without even hearing from Leo Frank prosecutor Hugh Dorsey. December 21st, Judge Newman rejects Frank's motion seeking certification for an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. The United States District Court denies the motion to set aside the guilty verdict. Frank's attorneys appeal to the United States Supreme Court. Frank's execution set for January 22, 1915, is again delayed. December 28th, Joseph R. Lamar, U.S. Supreme Court Justice, accepts the petition for habeas corpus, a document issued to bring a party before a court or judge to release the party from illegal imprisonment. Lynchings 55, Executions 99. 1915, January 20th, Mrs. J.W. Coleman, mother of Mary Fagan, filed a wrongful death suit against the National Pencil Company. She asked for $10,000 for the death of her daughter. The case was settled out of court. February 8th, America's first movie blockbuster, D.W. Griffith's film, The Birth of a Nation, is released, depicts the Ku Klux Klan in a positive light. April 19th, the U.S. Supreme Court rules against Leo Frank. His execution is set for April 25th. 
Another appeal by Leo Frank's attorneys is turned down by the U.S. Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court rejects Leo Frank's last appeal, his case remanded to the Superior Court of Georgia. The U.S. Supreme Court upheld Judge Newman's denial of Frank's petition for relief by a vote of 7-2 to two, and concluded that Frank's constitutional right to due process had not been violated. His execution, already postponed three times, would be reset on May 10th by Judge Hill for June 22, 1915. May 7th. The British ship, the Lusitania, is torpedoed by the Germans and sinks in the Atlantic. 1,198 passengers drown, including 114 Americans. May 31st. Georgia Prison Commission hearing begins. Leo Frank's attorneys had previously filed an appeal for clemency with the State Prison Commission, hoping to have his death sentence commuted. June 9th. A request for clemency for Leo Frank is rejected by the Georgia Prison Commission. June 21st. In his last week in office, Georgia Governor John Slayton commutes the sentence of Leo Frank from death to life in prison. Frank is transferred from the Fulton County Prison in Atlanta to the Georgia State Penitentiary in Milledgeville. There are demonstrations in the streets of Atlanta, and a mob converges on the governor's residence. June 26th. Seven weeks before the August 17th lynching, a New York Times article identifies Frank's future assassins as the, quote, Knights of Mary Fagan, end quote. July 18th. Prisoner J. William Crean slashes Leo Frank's throat. An inmate who was a doctor saves Frank's life. August 16th. Leo Frank is abducted from prison and taken to Marietta. August 17th. The previous evening, vigilantes had converged on Milledgeville State Prison Farm, Georgia's state penitentiary. Leo Frank is taken from his bed and driven almost 200 miles to Marietta, Georgia, hometown of the murder victim, Mary Fagan. There he is lynched from a tree at Fray's Gin. August 20th. Leo Frank is buried in Brooklyn, New York. November 14th. Booker T. Washington, well-known African-American spokesman, dies. November 17th. Judge W.D. Ellis of the Fulton County Superior Court hears the Pinkerton Detective Agency's lawsuit against the National Pencil Company for non-payment for services rendered. November. William Simmons reinstitutes the Ku Klux Klan in a ceremony atop Stone Mountain. Lynchings 69, executions 131. 1916. March 23rd. Marcus Mosiah Garvey, founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, arrives in New York and soon builds the largest race uplift movement of its time in America. November 7th. Hugh M. Dorsey is elected governor of Georgia. Lynchings 54. Executions 106. 1917. February 16th. In November 1915, Pinkerton's National Detective Agency filed a lawsuit against the National Pencil Company for non payment for services rendered. The Court of Appeals of Georgia ruled in the detective agency's favor. April 6th. America enters World War I. May 21st. The Great Fire of Atlanta destroys 73 blocks, leaves thousands homeless. Lynchings 38, executions 77. 1918. Hugh Dorsey is re-elected governor of Georgia. November 11th. End of World War I. Lynchings 64, executions 89. 1920. Tom Watson is elected senator from Georgia. Lynchings, 61, executions, 102. 1921. William J. Burns is appointed director of the Bureau of Investigation. Three years later, he is forced to resign because of his role in the Teapot Dome scandal. Lynchings, 64, executions, 140. 1957. April 23rd. Lucille Frank, Leo Frank's widow, dies in Atlanta. Lynchings, 1. Executions, 69. 
1962. Exact date unknown. The state's star witness, James Conley, dies, it is presumed. Leo Frank trial record is lost or stolen. Executions, 47. 1982. March 4th. Alonzo Mann, in failing health, signs an affidavit in which he claims that, as a National Pencil Company office boy, he witnessed James Conley carrying the body of Mary Fagan on the day of the murder. Executions, 2. 1983. January 4th. Based largely on Alonzo Mann's testimony, the Anti-Defamation League submits to the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles an application for a posthumous pardon exonerating Leo Frank. December 22nd. The Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles denies the application for a pardon for Leo Frank. The basis for the decision. Applicants did not show conclusively the innocence of Leo Frank. Executions 5. 1986. March 11th. The Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles issues a posthumous pardon to Leo Frank on the basis of the state's failure to protect him while in custody, but does not officially absolve him of the crime of murdering Mary Fagan. Executions 18. 2016. April 26th. The Nation of Islam releases The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 3. The Leo Frank Case, The Lynching of a Guilty Man. Lynchings and executions, including police brutality, continue. The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 3. The Leo Frank Case, The Lynching of a Guilty Man. Prepared by the Historical Research Department of the Nation of Islam, Chicago, Illinois. Copyright 2016 by Latimer Associates. All rights reserved. Published in audiobook form by the American Mercury with permission of the Historical Research Department of the Nation of Islam. Of the Nation of Islam. Of the Nation of Islam.